Welcome everybody to the Level Up Life. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we have Peter Abernathy, attorney, uh, super smart guy. Uh, he is an attorney with the Tennessee Higher Education Commission and the Tennessee Student Assistant Corporation. Uh, his, his official title is the Bureau Chief Student Aid and Compliance Officer, right? Wow. No, officer. Um, he oversees the bureau responsible for about half a billion dollars, billion with a B, of student aid in the state of Tennessee. Um, so a, a, a lot going on there, a lot of responsibility. We're, we're excited to dive into it and, and kind of see how, how you got here. Yeah. My goodness, you, you're like an important person. Like you, you make a difference in people's lives. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, uh, the title sounds real important. Uh, I don't know about me. Uh, fortunately, um, one of the things that I've, I've been fortunate over the years to, uh, uh, to have in my, in my career path has been uh, the opportunity to work with a lot of people who are smarter than me and really, really do a super job in, in making all the pieces fit together. So I get to be part of that, which is fun. So, you know, cool. speaking of that, I mean, like, speaking of the fun, because sometimes when people think work, they don't think fun, they think work. What is something that you're working on right now that you're, you're pretty excited about or something that's, you know, really caught your interest that you'd like to share? Well, uh, generally... And and we are doing a little bit of this right now. It's it's somewhat seasonal, um, uh, but one of the things that we do is we draft legislation uh, for uh, primarily for the financial aid uh, scholarships, grants, and scholarships that we administer. And um, so, being able to be a part of a team that that not only considers the the legality of what we wanna do and to make sure that language is precise and operates in such a way that um, the program can, can function the way that it should uh, and provide the benefits that it should. Uh, there's also a kind of a creative side to it as well, um, to be able to, to use the resources we have uh, to create or modify programs that, that adapt to the needs of the students and the schools and, and uh, so having uh, a chance to kind of put all that together and, and be a part of a, a team that, that works with that is, is one of the more enjoyable things that, uh, that we do. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I, have to, I have to imagine that's, that's pretty fulfilling as well. Yep. Like just, just the work that you do, you can go home say like, I'm, you know, I'm, I made a difference today. I, I made something happen. Yeah. T tell us a little about the, you've mentioned the program. I know Tennessee has a really unique, um, education program for, for higher education. Can you just tell us briefly about kind of what that is just, uh, to, for a little context? A program called the uh, Tennessee Promise Scholarship. And uh, it was one of the first of its kind in the country, um, really the only one though that operated statewide. And so this program is what's, what's called or what's referred to as a uh, last dollar scholarship. And what that means is students apply for uh, federal financial aid uh, and state financial aid. And what those do not cover of the cost of tuition and fees, uh, this Promise Scholarship uh, covers the remainder of that. So um, there are, of course, other expenses uh, in going to college, but the vast majority of those um, are covered uh, by this by this program. So it has... Uh, it has helped a, a good number of students uh, be able to go to school who might otherwise not have had the chance to go. Oh, that is awesome. You know, Peter, it's, it's actually funny you say that because one of our previous interviewees uh, that we had met with, uh, I didn't participate in that particular scholarship program, but uh, basically in, for him, it was an you know, underserved area of California, uh, was able to go through that um, us, this type of national scholarship program for themselves. And it really made a huge difference in their lives and being able to get the education that they wanted. And then mm -hmm. was then able to find a very comfortable, you know, like I'd say it's fast paced, there's a lot of work going on, but like a, a good comfortable position that, that he's now taking care of uh, like three foster children um, with, with that new career. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, 
that's really great. I mean, that it, it shows that these programs have a significant effect on people. And while people might sometimes look at the high level, it's easy to forget the individual stories that come out of it. Yeah. 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 No, it's, that's very true. Um, uh, there are a lot of those kinds of stories that, uh, that we see all the time of, of students who, uh, were able to participate in this and, and, uh, and it is what made all the difference for them being able to go to school and, and get a degree and and uh, and go to work in a field they enjoy and and uh, makes life better. Yeah, and, and you know, and speaking of going to school and getting a degree, you were not uh, a, 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 an attorney, future attorney, passing the bar at 24 years old. Um, this is something uh, and a path that you took much later. We'd, we'd love to dive into kind of how you got here. Yeah, I mean, basically, think if you ever seen the movie Wayne's World, where they do the let's just take <laughs> us back in time to uh, to that young Peter and what's going on in his mind, what's his situation, what, what's happening. Yeah, uh, good question. Um, you know, quite honestly, the answer is is uh, years and years in the making. I. I had always assumed I'd go to college and did, not really knowing a whole lot about what I wanted to do. Um, I was not uh, in a position, uh, fortunately at the time, to really have to rely on financial aid. I was able to work during the summers and, and paid for school and, and, and my parents helped as well, but uh, didn't have to take out loans. So financial aid wasn't really even part of my world. I didn't really uh, know a whole lot about it. Um, but uh, finished my degree and about a year or so later uh, married and uh, we moved to New York City. Uh, we assumed we'd be there for a couple of years. So I took a job with an adoption agency that worked uh, for New York City. Uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, didn't have anything to do with my, my uh, degree, which was in English. Um, <laughs> it's it's but, common. It seems to be yeah. very common for that yeah. to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, although although English really did provide a good background for being able to to write and to communicate and and to understand and put concepts together. Um, so uh, so I did that for a couple of years, and uh, then we moved to North Carolina. Uh, but before we moved, uh, the director of this agency I worked for in New York <laughs> um, encouraged me to consider going back to school and getting a master's in public administration. He felt that that based on kind of my interest, uh, that that would be a good degree to, to open up opportunities to work for, uh, um, you know, private uh, nonprofit agencies, governments, local and state, federal. Um, so just a, a broad array of, of uh, different employment uh, types. Uh, uh, variety of employment. And so, uh, so I did, we moved to North Carolina, I went back to school and, uh, you're how old there at that point? Sorry. Uh, 28, uh, 29, uh, when I finished. Um, <clears throat> so we stayed there for, uh, just a short while longer and then moved back to Tennessee and, um, uh, and uh, just a, a door opened up in state government with uh, the Department of Finance in their budget office, uh, which administers all the budgets for the state of Tennessee, uh, the various department budgets. And so I did that. And part of the part of the reason that I was able to get that job was because of the work that I'd done in in New York, and they they saw the the connection of being able to identify and work with human resource type agencies. So that was my first assignment uh, with the state of Tennessee that lasted for about a year. <laughs> and then I was reassigned to the budgets um, for higher ed and K-12 in the state. So all of the state uh, public institutions of higher education and then the K-12 system. Uh, so I was, I was uh, given responsibility to, to work with those budgets. Um, I did that for about, um, uh, I don't know, six or seven years, maybe uh, seven years. <clears throat> and the, the further in that time period I went, uh, the more I was really starting to think, you know, this is, this is 
good work. I enjoy it. I, I enjoy what I do. It's good. It's important work, uh, good work, but, uh, um, but didn't feel like that was <clears throat> um, the end. I felt like I needed to, to do something else. There were a variety of things I was thinking about, uh, maybe a, uh, an MBA or a, a doctorate in public administration or accounting uh, law, um, just a, a handful of things that I was considering and um, decided uh, eventually on going to law school. And um, wait a minute. Hold up there, Peter. You're telling me. <laughs> so how old are you at this point? 35, oh, 35. Uh, you said six, seven years. So that make you about yeah. like 34. I in, yeah, I was in my mid 30s. Yeah, that. OK, so yeah. I'll tell you what. To all the people out there who think they've hit their 30s and they're like, oh, I there's I'm behind. There's too much. Like there's just I, I can't you know get anywhere. There's age is just a number. Peter's yeah. proven that yeah. big time. <laughs> well, like to the because that's a, that's a big undertaking, right? Like going yeah. to law schools. I mean that that's like young people have have difficulty <laughs> with that with their young energy, and they're like, I can stay up all night and never worry about energy. Yeah. You know, like that, that's a lot to undertake, and especially um, you know being married and I, I'm, I'm not sure you had kids at this point, but that's a, that's a lot of responsibility. How, how did you manage? Well, we, we did, we had three kids at the time oh. and, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, and, and we see this, we, we work, uh, somewhat indirectly, but, but have experience in, in working with, uh, adult students where I work, um, and hear their stories and, and kind of see their progress and their successes. And, I think there is something to age that helps settle a person in their in their ability to 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 be disciplined and to have some success in school, maybe where they didn't have uh, years years before. Um, I work with a woman who uh, just about a year ago graduated um, with her bachelor's degree, and she's in her mid forties, uh, but did very very well. Um, and so that's the kind of thing that we see often with adult students. So they're, you know, maybe some of that was was helpful for me, just kind of being a little bit more determined in what I wanted to do. And and uh, uh, and of course, having a supportive wife helped, but uh, helped a great deal um, and a supportive boss uh, at the time, because the, the school that I, I went to was a night school. Um, and so I continued to work during the day and, and went to school at night. Um, wow. and one unique thing though, about this school is that the average age, uh, was right where I was. So there were people, uh, in their forties, uh, there were a few in their fifties that were there, uh, going to, to school and, um, uh, and people with, uh, just all kinds of employment backgrounds. Uh, we had a couple of doctors, we had uh, a handful of nurses, we had school teachers, um, business owners, small business owners. Um, we had realtors, we had um, stay-at-home moms, uh, we had uh, paralegals, dental hygienists, uh, policemen, uh, you name it. We, we had just a lot of people that, uh, and that were at that point in their lives, uh, kind of like me, where they, they wanted to do something different uh, or maybe add to what they were already doing. And so... Uh, so it was a, a, a class made up of people that were very much in a similar situation as me. And so um, anyway, so yeah, I, I, I uh, went through the program, uh, got out, took and, and passed the bar um, and still was not really sure what I wanted to do with it. Although I was kind of hoping to find my way into a uh, higher education, uh, but um didn't really have any uh, any open doors at that point, uh, any strong leads. Probably seven, eight months later, um, the attorney position in the agency where I work now opened up and the director of the agency called me and, and asked if I'd be interested in coming and, and working there uh, with them. And, and so uh, I jumped at the chance and uh, um, 
had a lot of interaction with them, of course, over the prior years, because they were one of the agencies uh, whose budgets I oversaw. And, um, and so I knew a fair amount about the agency and its people and, and what there was people was. there that you already knew had a relationship oh, with. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. that was very helpful, you know, but for me, it really wasn't, you know, just the timing of going back to school and having a family. Uh, it didn't make sense for me to kind of go out on my own and practice law, you know, and start all over in a career. I was already halfway through my career. I felt like at the time, but, uh, um, so being able to kind of fit into, uh, that stream of, of work that I was already involved in, uh, made a lot of sense. And yeah. An incredible journey. It really is because it, it, it's interesting. Like as myself, as a 32 year old, I tend to hit that point where I feel like, man, my career has been about, you know, 10 years long now. And that feels long. Like, it feels like, man, I've invested a lot of time. And then the idea that like I could pivot or change or do something, you know, almost entirely different than what I'm doing right now is a scary prospect because it's like, well, did those 10 years mean would, is that meaningless or did it not mean anything or did it not? Um, I don't want to waste that time. But what we found consistently and Peter, you you highlighted this at the beginning is that a lot of the times the stuff that you're doing now, although it might not be relevant to what you do later, there are a lot of transferable skills and there are a lot of transferable items that like people you meet, um, there's just different things that you pick up that that time is, it's, it's important, but you have to also realize you have a lot more time. Um, yeah. So you don't need to be afraid of investing in new things. Yeah. So, is, yeah. so I mean, like, yeah, I mean, for you pers personally, like it, does something you agree with? Like, is that, is that how, how you felt? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, looking back, it's, it's much easier to look back over, you know, 27, 28 years uh, than it is um, looking forward anytime you're about to make a change. Um, you know, because there's always kind of a, uh, at least for me, a fear of the unknown. Um, but as I look back over my time from really even in school, in college, through uh, and then throughout my career, <clears throat> every change that I made was preceded by a connection that I'd made in a previous uh, a previous job. So someone that kind of helped guide and and inform me on some things that I could do or ways to improve, um, uh, and certainly some connections that that were valuable resources and references for me. Uh, for my next uh, my next endeavor, and um, and experience in school or or with a job uh, that also helped open up doors. So the combination of those people and responsibilities uh, were really uh, just front and center in being able to to go from one uh, one position or. Uh, area of work uh, to another one. one. One thing that stood out to me was when we just talked about the law school, three kids working full time. I'm curious to know, like, what what would your calendar look like like that? Like, can you can you recall oh, yeah. like an example of like when did you wake up? Like, what what was your day a typical day like in that period of your life? You had the choice, at least for the first two years. Uh, to attend class Monday and Thursday nights or Tuesday, Wednesday nights. And so I chose the Monday, Thursday night uh, schedule. And those first two years, your courses were set for you. They, they kind of told you what to take. Um, and so Mondays and Thursdays, um, I was in class from 6 to 10 p.m. Um, so I'd get up in the morning, go to work. Uh, and then would stay at the office until it was time to, to head over to school, which was only about 15, 20 minutes away. <clears throat> and, uh, and then get home about 10, 30, 10, 40 in the evening, uh, get up and do it again the next day. The days I wasn't, or the evenings I wasn't in school, I would usually stay at my office then and, and study there at least until nine or 10 at night. Peter, did you have like a weekly budget for flowers for your wife or was it like a daily budget? Cause I, yeah. I mean, that I, I takes, I take some good support too. Like the dedication you have is incredible, but I have to also imagine from your partner's perspective, like there's gotta be a strong relationship there too. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it, there was, and and I think in many ways it got stronger because of it. Um, but no, no doubt she uh, she was uh, really the primary reason I, I was able to go and and make it through um, because uh, it it just was it was very difficult uh, the, the time involved in studying and and uh, and working on that. Um, but you know, again, <clears throat> my my weeknights were full. Monday through Friday, and then Saturdays, I spent most of the day studying. I'd take Sundays off just to spend time at church and with family uh, exclusively. And uh, the last two years opened up a little bit. There was a little more flexibility in schedules, and and uh, and, and you kind of learned how to be a student, how to think the way they wanted you to think. So it, it made some things a little bit easier. Um, but just knowing that... Um, as my wife would always tell me, you know, you're going to go through these four years, whether you're in school or not. So you might as well just suck uh, it up. I like and, that. And <laughs> go a, through that's it. That's a good point. Yeah. So, that's a good point. So I had to remind myself of that quite often. Um, I mean, you know, you think about it. And I, one thing that I've learned over the course of my uh, call it quote unquote fun employment uh, right now, got laid off back in February, uh, basically is that if you spend a like time's going to go by no matter what there's nothing you can do to slow the passage of time and in all honesty it can be difficult if you don't find your own purpose or your uh, idea of what you want to do to understand like you know what am i being relevant with my time am i am i doing my am i being respectful of my own time in my own life and it really just takes like an investment per day even if it's small that will expon like in some ways exponentially grow over time uh, just because you made that small investment. Like one hour a day of Spanish may not teach you, you know, Spanish in a month, but a year, two years, time's going to go by anyway. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah. By that time, yeah. you'll probably be really good. So it's, I appreciate that because it's, it's a really, really good mindset to have for, I think anybody that time is going to go by. So why not, you know, do what it, you know, invest in yourself. Did you ever face throughout this time, like any doubts at, at any point where you, where you were kind of doubting this decision uh, somewhere along the way? Oh yeah. Yeah. And how'd you deal with it? Great uh, question. I had doubts before I started uh, and had doubts uh, almost every day for four years um, wow. that I'd be able to get through it. Um, the uh, <clears throat> the material itself is not it's not rocket science. It's not a very difficult uh, study uh, or educational program. What makes it hard, what made it hard for me was just the sheer volume of work. Uh, that that you were faced with day in day out. You'd finish a huge amount of work in one day, and you'd turn around and have the same amount to do the next. And so, doing that uh, repeatedly was was draining. And there were times when when I uh, <clears throat> when I felt very insecure about my abilities and, and talents. Um, uh, there was a lot of prayer, uh, a lot of faith exercise during those years, and. Um, and I just I had felt from the beginning that that was what uh, the Lord wanted me to do and and the path he wanted me to pursue. And so I relied on that and and trusted that uh, I'd find a way uh, through uh, that he'd help me. And and uh, and he did um, uh, preparing for the bar and studying for that again while working uh, was was uh, another uh you know, mountain to climb, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, you just have to kind of put your head down sometimes and march forward and don't look up, just keep walking. <laughs> just oh keep man. Yeah. yeah. You know, your <clears throat> advice in particular makes me think of how a lot of people will stop themselves from doing something because they might think it's too difficult or they might think it's too hard. But uh, for a lot of things, like it's really, it's not difficult per se. It's just an investment. Like you need to move mm -hmm. forward. You need to be disciplined. You need to continue with it. And I just find it fascinating that, you know, with that mindset that 
there's so much that someone could accomplish. And although you have your doubts, like you're always going to have the doubts. Like it's, it, it's, it, I don't think there's anyone who's gone through a major career change or transition or anything of that uh, means without having doubts like Buzz Aldrin. I'm sure that man was like, is this thing going to fly? Cause I, <laughs> I mean, I, are we sure? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I just really like that takeaway. I guess to, to, you know, to wrap it up, we got, we got to, we got to close the curtain here pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, reflect back to that time. Think back to that person who you were, you know, that mid thirties. Um, there's a lot of people today. Um, even, even people like Gavin and I, who are, who are faced with these decisions of, man, I, maybe I need to make a big shift. And, um, I know we, we've gleaned a lot of different things from what you shared, but I wonder if you could just succinctly share, uh, any advice you would have to someone in, in those shoes contemplating a move like that. I don't know. I, I think, uh, the idea that, uh, you know, a career change can 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 cause a, a bit of trepidation or or concern. Uh, reservation with some people makes sense. Um, again, the idea of of the unknown can can do that uh, to people, uh, but uh, but it happens all the time. Uh, I've seen it, of course, with my own uh, career, but a lot of people I work with uh, have gone through similar uh, transitions. Uh, of all of the people that I work with, and I, and I work relatively closely with a good um, 15, 20, 25 people that are very well educated. Um, I don't know, but perhaps maybe one or two of those <clears throat> started with a, a degree in college that really aligns perfectly with what they're doing. Uh, most people that I know have, have done something or studied something that is different from where they wind up in their careers uh, later. Uh, I know so many people like that. And so um, you're not alone if you if you feel like you, you need to transition or want to transition and, and you've got questions or doubts. Uh, there's always somebody to talk to, uh, people at schools, people at employment offices, people in your own uh, work environment uh, that have experience. <clears throat> and so ask questions, um, uh, study it out, figure out uh, the best way forward and and then just uh, move forward with it. Uh, and, and things will work out. They always do. Well, Peter, thank you. Uh, we've really enjoyed this conversation. We could just we could just go on and on. Um, but really, thank you for your wisdom uh, and for joining us. And I will be sure to keep in touch. Yeah. Catch you Thanks later. For, yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Yep. All right. Well, cool. What a, what a, what a wise man. I just felt like <laughs> wisdom, like coming as, as he was speaking, he was, he was just so like, I don't know. I, I think I could tell he's somebody who's pretty humble too. Like he, he didn't seem to want to really uh, go on and on about how, you know, how difficult something was or, or how, how, you know, really how, amazing some of the things he's doing are are right now with with, with the state of Tennessee um, just a really humble guy I think a great example of just having faith and dedication um, you know and and having that long vision for your life and it's like yeah okay four years from now those four years are going to go by no matter what and I, I love that I mean I tell you what when you're in your teenage years or you're in your 20s they tell you like, maybe think of a five-year plan, think of a 10-year plan, but no one asks you to do a 30-year plan <laughs> or, or a 40-year plan or a 60-year yeah. plan, right? Because you're going to live for a long time. Like this, this, people say life is short. It is the longest thing you're ever going to experience by far. And mm -hmm. it is no more apparent than that, than getting older and getting the wisdom that that is the case. Um I, I just think it's so important for people. And I mean, the, the takeaways that we got from this one in particular, I mean, I even felt inspired from it of like, you got to keep doing those small things that, that of like investing in yourself, you got to go out and meet people. You got to be kind. You got to be put out good work. Like 
all those things like come together and they can really just drastically transform your life in terms of what you can do and what you can accomplish. So I just found his story to be, I mean, just great. Like, I hope that the people that were listening today, if you're thinking about, man, like it seems so difficult for me to try to go back to school at 30 or 40 or 50 to make a large transition in my life, realize, yeah, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy, but you have the opportunity and the ability just as much as anyone else to be able to accomplish it. It just takes time. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good way, a good spot to end there, Gavin. Um, Let's do it guys. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, remember to subscribe, share this, uh, like it. Don't forget like that part. It, that part's you know, important. click, you know, you click that button that's got a thumb and you, you just, or you watch it twice. You yeah. know, you just keep repeat, just yeah. let it keep going, you know? You build, that, you, yeah. And you build an AI bot that just is designed only to just watch it and generate views. Okay. Well, we, we might need to check that out, but yeah. yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> uh, I might cut that part out, but, uh, <laughs> well guys, again, yeah. Thanks so much for joining. Catch you later. Catch you later next week.